What's going on out there, YouTube? I am Supreme Films. Welcome to episode 16 of The Real Rap Show, the story of Donnell Porter. So before we start this episode, I would like to say if you have a business, you are a creator, you have a clothing line, and you want your product or your business promoted on The Real Rap Show, email me at therealrapny at gmail.com. Donnell Porter. Donnell Porter was the younger brother to Richard Porter. Now, a lot of people are familiar with who Rich Porter is. I know you probably heard the name, but there are some people who are not familiar with who Rich Porter is. So let me give you a little history on who Rich Porter is, because I'm going to do a whole different episode on Rich Porter. But let me give you guys a little history on who Rich Porter is. In the 1980s, Rich Porter was a well-known drug dealer. He had lots of money. He had lots of nice cars. He had lots of girls. He was a famous, famous person in Harlem in the 1980s. Lots of rappers have mentioned his name in songs. Um, a movie was made about Rich Porter and his drug dealing days. And that movie you probably seen. And that movie was called Paid in Full. Now, Richard Porter ended up getting killed in the late 80s by a close friend of his that he did business with, that he sold drugs with, that was a known person in Harlem as well. If you're familiar with the story, I'm pretty sure you all know who was charged with killing Rich Porter. The person is now home, actually, but I'm going to save that for a whole nother video. But before Richard was killed, there was a situation that took place involving his little brother. And his little brother ended up losing his life behind Richard's drug deals. So, in this episode of The Real Rap Show, I'm going to break down to you guys the story of Donnell Porter. Now, before we begin, I'm going to read to y'all the actual newspaper article from the New York Times, dated January 30th, 1990. The story was covered and written by Donatella Lorch for the New York Times. The title of it was Body of a Boy Found in Bags on Bronx Path. The body of a kidnapped 12-year-old boy whose finger was cut off and sent to his family in December to pressure them into sending ransom money was found Sunday afternoon wrapped in plastic bags off the Hutchinson River Parkway in the Bronx, the police said yesterday. The body of William Porter of 155 West 132nd Street in Manhattan was found on a bicycle path near the Parkway's City Island exit by a homeless man looking for cans, Lieutenant Raymond O'Donnell, a police spokesman said. It was less than a mile from where the body of his older brother Richard who the police said was a crack dealer the kidnappers wanted to pay the ransom, was found shot to death on January 4th. Williams' body was inside 14 black plastic garbage bags, stuffed one inside the other. It was clothed in clean white sneakers, blue jeans, and a white shirt. The body was badly decomposed, but not cut up or dismembered, Lieutenant O'Donnell said. William was kidnapped the morning of December 5th as he walked the four blocks from his home to public school 92. For 48 hours, his abductors tried to extort as much as $500,000 from his 25-year-old brother, Richard Thomas Porter, the police said. On the second day, the kidnappers cut off the boy's right index finger and left it in a coffee cup in a bathroom with a minute-long tape of the child pleading with the family to pay the ransom. Get the money. They cut my finger off, William said shaking on the tape. A police official said, please help me. Get the money. I love you, mommy. On January 4th, Richard Porter was found shot to death near Orchard Beach Park, less than a mile from where William's body was found Sunday. He was shot several times in the head and chest and the police found $2,239 in his pocket. Detectives have speculated that William was kidnapped because of his brother's drug dealing 
and that Mr. Porter was trying to negotiate without the help of the police when he was killed. They said Mr. Porter sold about $50,000 worth of crack a week. He was convicted of drug possession in April 1984 and of weapons possession in November 1984. The investigation is focusing on rival drug dealers and those who extort from them. On January 16th, a drug dealing associate of Mr. Porter was found shot to death at 149 West 132nd Street. Stanley Harvey, 24 years old of 716 Nicholas Avenue, was found dead of several bullet wounds on the fifth floor of an abandoned building. Investigators believe the three killings may have been connected. Investigators say they are looking for a 1989 two-door black Nissan with the New York license plate number 7HL209 in which Richard Porter was seen in Harlem the evening before his body was found. Pathologists will try to determine whether William was killed before or after his brother was crying on the phone. William's mother, Velma Porter, 44, discovered her son was missing at 4 p.m. on December 5th when he did not come home from school. At 5 p.m., she received the first of seven telephone calls with William crying on the phone. A caller believed to be male asked for $500,000 in ransom, but Mrs. Porter said they could not afford the ransom. The next day, a caller told the family to go to the nearby McDonald's restaurant, and a family friend found two rings there, that belonged to William, a cassette tape, and a two-inch piece of an index finger. The last contact with the family that the police know of was made on December 10th, police officials said, when a woman handed a note to a child in Upper Manhattan and told him to deliver it to William's aunt. The note said that the boy was in pain and needed medical attention. Now let's get into the story of Donnell Porter. Now, in this movie, Paid in Full, they kind of twisted the story up a little bit because they didn't really get into detail about what happened to Donnell Porter. Now, in the movie, Makai Pfeiffer, who plays Rich Porter, there was a scene where he got a phone call from his mother telling him to come to the house. She was frantic on the phone. Then he gets to the house and um, she's telling him that some guys are calling the house saying that they got Donnell. Then there was another scene where he was in the car telling the other guy who played AZ that, yo, they got my little brother, they want 500,000, and they sent his finger cut off, and a um, a video record of him crying on the phone, and also the scene at the end of the movie where I think the guy was his mother's boyfriend or their uncle that lived with them, who was being brought out by the police, along with another young man who worked inside of like a little game room in Harlem. And these two guys, I don't know who the guy who worked it in the store was supposed to be, but in the movie, I guess they're saying that his mother's boyfriend was the guy who was involved in Donnell's kidnapping and murder. Now, also in this movie, Paid in Full, there's a scene where Makai Pfeiffer, who plays Rich Porter, gets into an altercation with this guy who lived in their house. I don't know if it was their uncle or his mother's boyfriend, but there was a scene where these two get into an altercation where Rich Porter is telling him to stop living off his mom's and that the drugs that he gave him, he smoked it all up. And the guy is pretty much just living in the house for free, getting high, not doing nothing for the house. That's what the altercation was about. Rich Porter grabs this dude up shoves him out the house, punches him in his face. The little boy who was supposed to be Donnell in paid in full is standing right there looking at this altercation. Let me take it back a little bit. The little boy also knows that this uncle or their mother's boyfriend is also a drug addict because he's seen in the house. I think he was in there shooting heroin or smoking crack. I think he was shooting heroin and the little boy like seen him, but This guy is a person that lives with them. He's in the house with them every day. When Rich Porter is out in the street and he's out mostly all day and all night selling drugs, this person that's in their house 
like I said, their, his mother's boyfriend or their uncle or whoever the dude is, is spending time with the little boy. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not saying this guy is no father figure. Like I said, he's an addict. But he lives in the house with them. He's in the house with the little boy every day. All Richard do is buy the little boy stuff, buy him sneakers, buy him clothes, keeping them, you know, fresh. That was a word they used back in the 80s, fresh. He roughs this dude up in the movie, punches him in the face, throws him out the house. The guy been living there for I don't know how long. He's also supplying this guy with crack to keep him high on a regular basis. The guy ain't got to buy no drugs. He giving the guy nice little pieces to hold him down. Because one thing Rich knows is that this guy knows that he got it. He's an addict, but he know you got money. He know that you got crack for days. So he should never have to buy no crack. If he living in the house with y'all and he helping out at some point because you can't just be living in there and not doing nothing. He's doing, he's helping out doing something that they didn't show in the movie. But we going to speak about more about what they didn't speak about in the movie and, and a lot of things that they messed up on, but they still put the movie out. It was a success and it's a classic film, but this guy is living in the house with them. Rich is supplying them with drugs. I don't know if he was giving them money, but giving them drugs to keep them okay. I'm not sure if Rich's mom was on drugs, but in the movie, they made they made her character look like she was a like a fiend. No disrespect to um Miss Porter, but that was the way they made her look in the film. Because if you look at A Z's mom in the movie, she's a working lady. It's a different type of look that they gave A Z's mom compared to Rich's Porter mom. That's why I say they gave her to look like she was like a crackhead or something like that. Even though she might ha might not have been, but that was the way they made her look. Now, Richard Porter is making a lot of money. Him, another guy, and another guy. Y'all can do y'all history and find out who these individuals is. But he's getting a lot of money. And I spoke about this in a prior video that I made that's puzzling to me. And I'm going to speak on it again. Rich Porter was making a lot of money. I mean, he's got all types of cars. He, they're buying cars a year before the cars come out. So they got that kind of money where they can go to the dealership and tell the dealer, I don't want the 87 Porsche. I want the 88 one. Porsche then made it, but it ain't even hit the, the dealerships yet. The dealerships know about the car, but they can't even get it yet. These guys got the money to where they go into the dealership, giving the dealership an extra 20, 30, 40,000, whatever it is on top of whatever the car costs, telling them, we want the we want next year's version now. These dealerships were doing this for them. So they're driving around in 87 in an 88 Porsche when a lot of other dealerships have no access to this car. And these dudes got the money to make these kind of moves. This is actual fact. You can Google this. They was going to dealerships making these type of moves, taking trips buying jewelry, taking care of their girlfriends, buying their girls' cars, you know, doing things for the hood too. They would do things like throw block parties or throw trips to Great Adventure for the kids who was unfortunate, stuff like that. That's cool. The thing that puzzles me, and I know this situation is over with, years have passed, but I still want to say, how can these guys have all that money? They buying cars a year before the cars even come out and y'all still living in poverty stricken neighborhoods. Why nobody thought about buying a house? Why nobody thought about let me get mommy out of here? Why nobody thought about yo let me make let me make a better life for Donnell and my moms and this crackhead dude that live with us. Let, let me get them out of here first. Why that move wasn't made? I'm not down in rich. I'm not down in nobody. I'm just saying that why when these dudes get this kind of money, mom is still living in poverty. And sometimes, like I said, if that move is made and you move your moms out and make a better life for her, some of the things that happened probably would have never happened. Y'all see what I'm saying? I'm not disrespecting or downing the Porter family or no other family. But I'm just saying that when y'all dudes get this kind of money, why do y'all run to the jeweler 
so they can buy their family a house or a car first. Why y'all don't do it for yourself? How y'all sitting on 40, 50, 60, 70,000, 80,000, and y'all still living in poverty, man? It don't make no sense to me. I'm going to continue to say this. You can get, you can buy a house, man. You can get an apartment for your mom or for you or for your family and move out of there. You can still continue to do your little thing, but at least give her something different or the family something different. It don't make sense to me. A lot of these dudes that saying they got this and all that, they ain't even got it like that. They just boosting it up to make it sound like they got it like that. But common sense, man. If you got two, three hundred thousand dollars, why mommy can't get a crib? You just saving all this money for what? Your lawyer, your bail, your funeral? What? That's what I don't understand. Back to the story. So he's getting all this money. They still living in Harlem. Poverty stricken neighborhoods. Back in the days, Harlem was crazy with the murders and shootouts and drugs. So this is what they lived around every day. And this man is out there making this kind of bread. I'm not downing them. I'm just speaking on the facts. This is the kind of money he was making. This where they lived at. Now, this dude is living with them. This guy out there making all kind of money, buying cars, chains. You know, he's a kingpin at a very young age. And let me be clear about something else. He was getting money since about 16, 17 years old, they said. This guy was on the road to becoming a millionaire. And he was close to having, I don't know if he had it, but they was close to having millions of dollars. They was already buying three, four hundred thousand dollars worth of drugs. They living in poverty. It just doesn't, it don't add up to me. How could you have three hundred thousand dollars cash stashed somewhere and you still walking in a roach infested poverty building in Harlem? How? Why? What? Y'all didn't know how to invest. They didn't know how to I'm pretty sure they knew about how to buy a house if they knew how to buy a car. Other known figures that were in that lifestyle were buying mansions and moving to Miami and doing different things. So it really stuck on me why these guys were just... There was a rumor that them guys would always say that they loved Harlem, that Harlem was where it was at, that they wasn't going to leave Harlem, that you know Harlem was the place to be. That's where their heart was at. I feel that. I respect that. 100%. But get mommy and Donnell out of here. Even the crackhead dude. Get them out of here. If you're going to separate him from the family and move mommy and Donnell out of there, do that. But if you're not, move the crackhead dude in with them. Give him enough crack to where he ain't got to travel to be trying to look for no drugs or out trying to commit no crimes to get no drugs. They good. Whenever he do need some work, he beep you. Hey, I'm getting low on some things. Come bring me something. You want to keep this guy happy because you, one thing you never underestimate the person that ain't got nothing. Even though this guy living with y'all, he your mother's boyfriend, he the uncle, who, whoever he was. Me as a person, I'm going to keep this guy happy because he know what I'm bringing in. It's bad enough he already smoking the stuff that I'm selling. And these crackheads ain't dumb. They know what he know I'm getting money. First and foremost, I want to keep this guy high and happy all the time. But in the movie, he beats this guy up. Now, I don't know if that happened in real life. Get in the comments. If y'all know about the Al po I mean, the Rich Porter story. Well, who was that guy that lived with um, his mother? Was that his uncle or was that his mother's little old man that just lived in the house you know like back in the days um your mom's had an old man he ain't she ain't even call him your husband her husband they would call her that's her old man they ain't married or nothing like that she his old lady you know what i'm saying so get in the comments who was that dude that lived with them because i've seen a lot of documentaries and i read a lot of stuff but they never really detailed who was that dude that lived with them so he getting a lot of money still living in the hood in the movie, I keep going back to that because I I want to clear something up. I just want to keep y'all memory on he beat this dude up inside the house in front of the little boy, kicks him out the house. Now, this guy got a motive to do something because he don't got nowhere to stay now. He can't get no drugs the way he used to. 
you going to blackball him in the street. Ain't nobody going to want to deal with him. You know, so now he's out in the street. He don't got nowhere to go. His clothes and all that is in there. In the movie, you didn't kick the dude out with his Long John shirt on. He's gone. He outside. He pissed off. Now, I'm going to get that dude. Because now, he didn't threw me out the house. What can I do to get back at this dude? He know a lot of dudes in the street. I ain't got no guns to shoot him. I don't really got no army to go to war with him. I don't got his kind of money. What could I do to really affect this dude, man? Because what he just did was violation number one. I'm living in the house with y'all. We spend the most time with Donnell. You out in the street selling drugs, driving fancy cars, going to clubs, throwing money in the air. We in the house killing roaches. And I'm not being, no. I'm not trying to be funny, but I'm just being real. We in the house living off what we got. It ain't no super bags of groceries in here. I don't know because in the movie, the guy said, you ain't even doing nothing for the house. So I don't know who gave him that line or was anybody around that knew what was going on inside of Rich's crib to allow him to, to put that line in the movie because it had to be to, to some type of realness for them to put it in, in the script. So he was saying that you out doing all this and you living this flashy lifestyle and you ain't even giving your mother no money. This is why the guy had a motive to do something to him to really affect him because it's bad enough, like I said, you out there living this rapper lifestyle, this kingpin drug dealer lifestyle. You got four and five, six cars a year ahead of the time that they're to be released. Jewelry, girls, attention, money, pounds of drugs. And we still living here like this? So... That goes back to what I said. It don't make no sense to me how y'all dudes be getting that kind of money and your mama still living in the projects. But y'all riding around the S500 Benzes with chains on and jewelry and your family still living in the projects killing roaches. And 85% of the time, at the end of the night, when you finish your luxurious lifestyle of dropping your girlfriend off and doing all this and all that, you go right back inside that same roach infested crib and lay your behind down and go to sleep you ain't really got it like that because why you ain't got a condo it just don't add up it really don't add up rich is in the street still living his everyday lifestyle doing his one two thing he's selling his drugs driving his cars same old same old thing now this dude catches donnell and i guess he had devised a plan up with his homeboys that said yo I know exactly what we going to do. Donnell know me. So we ain't going to hurt him, but I know how to get some money out this dude. He didn't kick me out the house. I know what to do to this dude. Me as a person, I would have never did that to Donnell because if I lived in the house with this little boy every day, I'm helping him with his homework because I'm pretty sure the dude played that kind of part in the house with him. You know, helping him with his homework, not every day, but helping him with little certain things, you know, laughing, joking with him, you know, when he's high, you know, stuff like that. So I would have never had a heart to kidnap that little boy and even bring any kind of bodily harm to him. And I live in the house with this little boy. He kind of like my son because his father ain't around. So he kind of like my, my son. So I would have never did that to him. I would have came up with something else. But this dude devises a plan with some other known killers to kidnap Donnell. To get back at this dude. Now, I don't think the uncle, whoever the uncle or I keep saying uncle or I don't know if the guy had really had any intentions of hurting Donnell. But at first, he probably didn't. But because he probably figured that Donnell know me. He going to get in the car with me and we got him. We going to put him on the phone so y'all can know we got him. At some point, the little boy knew he was kidnapped because they not letting him go home. Also in the movie, like I said, the little boy seen Rich beat this man up in front of him and kick him out the house. This man that the little boy is used to seeing live with them every day and every night. So now the little boy probably know in his mind 
this is why he got me because of my brother beating him up and doing that to him. So they call in the house. They tell him the family, we want $500,000. Now, Richard and them don't know that the mother's boyfriend or the uncle guy is involved in this because while the little boy is missing, the mother's boyfriend or the uncle comes back to the house to help. I guess they got him back to try to find out that he see the little boy. So now the uncle or the mother's boyfriend is back inside the house. Now he's helping the search. He's like, yo, we got to find him. Yo, I can't believe he gone. But what Rich and them don't know is that he is the person that's orchestrated this whole thing. This is how wicked the streets is. And after this, I finished telling y'all this. I'm going to tell y'all something else that makes a lot of sense with what's going on today. That's why I want y'all to hear this, because this is how wicked people in the streets is back then and still is today. Now, they got the little boy. The little boy is somewhere and the uncle is going back to the house and back to the kidnappers. Now, like I said, Richard and them don't know that this guy is involved in this. He's in the house with them every time he leaves. He go back and tell the, the guys that's down with him, yo, listen, we got to we gotta turn the heat up a little bit. They think we playing. Yo, listen. So now what they do is, after they done called the house three, four, five times, demanding the money, and the uncle know that Rich got this money. So he's not trying to take no for an answer. They know he got it. The uncle lived with them. He didn't seen certain things. The guy was giving, you understand what I'm saying? Is You can't tell this dude no. Because he know you got it. He didn't seen it. He know who you is in the street. He know who your partners is. The whole hood know that you got mad money. You a superstar out there. It ain't no way you ain't got it. So the uncle is going back telling the kidnappers, listen, this dude think we playing games. I know for a fact he got the money. They think we playing games. So now at this point, he decides to bring bodily harm. To that little boy and this is the way I think that he deserved the electric chair for real because you lived with this little boy how could you how could you draw blood from him and watch him in agony and pain someone that you woke up with seeing every day for years at a time the boy was 12 years old and I don't know how long this guy was living in the house with him or whoever he whatever whoever he was but you still played a part in that boy's life you got memories with him, his birthdays, his Christmases. You was there, Thanksgivings. Y'all ate together. There probably was times you walked him to school yourself or came and picked him up. So he decides, if we really want to get this money, or oh, I don't know if it was his idea or the other guys who probably had more control over him, but they decide to chop off a piece of this boy's finger, man, and send it to the family for them to see this to really turn the volume up to like, yo, stop playing with us. Now, while this boy's finger is cut off, the uncle is still coming back and forth to the house. Now the police is involved. The family, the mother and the sister want to involve the police. They didn't call the cops now. The cops are calling the house, trying to tap the line to find out what number these callers are coming from. Now the uncle is, he's in the house hearing all of this he know the cops is involved now so now it's like damn you know like they didn't call the police so he going back to the kidnappers telling the kidnappers listen we might have to because we can't send him back he's seen he know he gonna tell so we can't send him back man these dudes in court they didn't got the police involved the police is at the house now so now it's a chance we may not even get the money and we can't just go out like this and we don't get nothing out of it. And, you know, like I said, we can't send the boy back because if we send him back, we go going to jail. If we don't go to jail, these dudes going to blow our head off out here. People already out here looking for looking, looking to find out who did this. And if they find that it was me, I'm a, I'm a dead man out here. So they killed Donnell. The uncle ended up getting arrested and being charged for donnell's murder him and some other guys that are well-known killers from harlem 
Now, the reason why I believe that his uncle or his mother's boyfriend did this to Donnell and did this to Rich is because Rich violated him because that man was a grown man, whether him being a crackhead, whatever he was, he was a figure in that household. That's like you doing it to your father and kicking your father out the house in front of your little brother. That's what built it up the anger inside that dude to do that. Now, he didn't probably think that they was going to have to hurt that boy, but once they got the cops involved, y'all, like I said, they had to do what they had to do. It cost the little boy his life. Now, maybe if Richard, like I said, would have been giving the guy a little more or gave them a better, gave them a better lifestyle. If your mother and this man know that you out there doing all of this, you got all of this money, you driving all these nice cars, and we still living in this dirty crib, in this dirty building on this block. Why can't we get a better life? If you want to stay out there, you stay out there and do your thing, but we don't, don't leave us here. You can't be out there living that lifestyle and then we here. You know, that's what built it up, the anger for that man to do that. Now, like I said, I want y'all to get in the comments because I'm pretty sure there are people who know about, and I ain't asking y'all to talk about it or I ain't asking y'all to snitch, so I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a retract that. I'm just saying that I'm pretty sure that there are people that know the relationship between his mother and whoever that dude was, and that's what I think caused that. Like I said, the story about what happened with Donnell is out there. All I'm doing is just bringing it back to surface so a lot of people that don't know about the story can start to Google it and find out about it. Like I said, they made a movie about it. If you've seen Paid in Full, they didn't really get into detail what happened to Donnell, but Donnell's story was big. You know, and then, you know, Rich ended up getting killed by one of his close associates. But they tried to pin, at first, they was trying to pin um, Donnell's murder on the guy that killed Rich. But um, come to find out, this guy didn't have nothing to do with that. And um, that it was somebody that was close to home that a lot of people had no idea did this. You know what I'm saying? So that's how wicked the game is. Like I said, maybe if he would have, Rich would have took 100000 and got his mother a house in Jersey or either a different part of New York somewhere, a cleaner environment, just so they won't have to wake up around that every day and just to keep your family away from the danger because you're out there doing all this at any given time. You know, the, the police can run up in your house. You know, the Jack boys can run in there thinking you got something in there and murder your whole family. Things like that was going on in Harlem. You see what happened to AZ and they busted in on him and, and shot him all them times and killed his aunt and all of that. You know, this what could have happened to Rich. But... It didn't happen like that. It happened totally different. But if he would have moved out of Harlem, maybe Donnell would still be alive. You know, maybe his uncle wouldn't have been angry enough to do nothing like that. So that was that story. You know what I'm saying? I just wanted to bring that back to light for y'all. Somebody in the comments, a couple of people, somebody in the comments recently told me to talk about it. And then a few people that I know on the street actually told me to touch on um, the Rich Porter story, but I decided to speak on the Donnell Porter story first and then go over to the Rich Porter story. So my message to you listeners right now, it goes along with the story with Rich Porter. You dudes that's out there today making this thousands of dollars. I'm seeing y'all dudes on IG with diamond chains on and flooded Rolexes and Audemars Piquets and y'all families are still living in poverty, y'all dudes need to wake up, man. For real. Spend some of that money while you got it. Those type of lifestyles don't last forever. The, le the least thing you want to do is if something happened to you, mommy and the rest of the family is good. After they didn't did whatever they did to you or you go to jail or you lose your life, your family don't even live in that neighborhood no more. People ain't got to look at them no more, deal with that pain. Take care of your family first. I know committing crimes is wrong and all of that, but if you are, how can I say it? 
I guess I can say if you are blessed with the mind to be a criminal and make that kind of money, and yeah, I say blessed because you got some people out here that's dumb as I don't know what, that don't know what to do. But if you are blessed with the mind to know how to do stuff like that and make money thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars, please get mommy out the hood first. Get your auntie out the hood. Whoever's left in the family that you got left, do something for them. For real. Because nothing lasts forever, especially when you're in the street committing crimes. So my message to y'all is I hope you learn something from the Donnell Porter story because it also shows you how wicked the people is around you. And it shows you that be careful of who you tell your business to. Be careful of who you show your business to because it will be your downfall. And I spoke about this before in the Nipsey Hussle video. Be careful of the women you bring around you. Be careful of the people that you provide vital information to, whether it's family or friends. Sometimes it ain't even good to let your family know that you're doing certain things because your family will get jealous. People that live in your household will get jealous of you and, and, and call the cops on you or do something that'll take you down because they feel like you ain't providing enough or doing enough for them. Be mindful. And I'm going to say this again. Never underestimate the person next to you that ain't got nothing. This is all facts. This is all jewels. If you're out there in the streets doing anything today related to crime and you're getting thousands of dollars, mommy should not still be living on the block, man. Some dude's going to try to buy a car and all that. Listen, save that for later. Do something for your moms, man. You feel me? That's the message I want to give to y'all. You know, rest in peace to Donnell Porter. Rest in peace to Richard Porter. Unfortunate circumstances. You know, Donnell would have been a grown man today. Richard would have been a grown man today. Who knows who Richard would have become if he would have still been alive? Who knows who Donnell Porter would have become in today's world if he would have lived? You know, be mindful of the people you around, y'all. This has been episode 16 of The Real Rap Show, the story of Donnell Porter. And once again, before we end this episode, I would like to send my condolences and my remorse, even though it's years and years ago, to the Porter family, the mother, the sister, whoever's in the family. I send my regards to y'all. You know, this has been Supreme Films, episode 16 of The Real Rap Show. Y'all be good. Y'all be safe. Real rap.